Welcome to the Net of Light uh, seventh online teaching. We're really glad to have you with us and glad that we can get together like this during these uh, COVID lockdown times. And with us, uh, I know our people from all over the Western Hemisphere and some who are staying up later in the Eastern Hemisphere too. We're so glad to have you. Um, <clears throat> we meet like this every two weeks. And the reason we do it is to help each other hold steady because these are very unsteady times. And those of us who are involved in the work with the grandmothers and the net of light have been called uh, because we wanted to help at this time and because we want to help hold steady. The earth is shifting now and all the energies on earth are shifting. Therefore, all life on earth is shifting and it's not an easy ride right now for hardly anyone. And for some, it's very, very difficult. And so there's a need for those of us who are willing and able to hold steady now. And as we hold steady, then the net of light anchors deeply through us. And that is our purpose in coming together to give service to one another, to ourselves and to the planet, to everything that lives. Because these times are the times we signed up for. These times are the times that we were born for. No mistakes. So welcome, welcome. Um, what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna talk with you a little bit now uh, about what's happening as if you didn't know, you know what's happening, but I will also maybe be able to help cast a little light on some of that. Um, and also then we'll work with the net of light together because as we do that, great power ensues and spreads throughout the net of light all over our planet, blessing, anchoring, and holding life steady. Um, we do this, the grandmothers have asked that every time we meet that we do this. And they've said, do it for yourselves and do it for everything that lives. And so we do always. And so whenever there's a grandmother's meeting, whenever there's a, a net of light gathering or a Zoom meeting, we always work with the net of light for this express purpose. Uh, this work is selfless work in that we do it for the all. And it's also self-fulfilling work because it affects us and fills us up with this radiance, with this goodness, uh, peace, and a feeling of communion with one another. Uh, this work that we do with the grandmothers and the net of light is free and open to everyone. And uh, we don't charge any money for it because the grandmothers gave it to us and then they asked us pass this on, pass this on to those who do not have it and to those who want it. And so this we gladly do. And so there are now Grandmother's Net of Light groups all over the world. And since the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, most of us are meeting on Zoom. Although in Europe, there have been some resumption of face-to-face uh, -face meetings now. Nothing like that is in the offing in the United States because we are in deep trouble with the virus now. Um, we uh, work with all kingdoms of life. We work with the human family. We work with the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, the mineral kingdom, the kingdoms of the air. We work throughout time and space because when you're working this way inwardly, and when you're working with the net of light that is holding the earth, that is holding the cosmos, there is no limit of time and space. And so we're always working right here and now with those from all times past and those who will come in times in the future. So this is this great, the net of light is this great blanket of love that covers the entire cosmos. Uh, when science finally discovered it, uh, 
in uh, 2014. They called it the largest living construct in the cosmos, and this it is. And we are each part of this radiant net of light. There is no real separation at this level of life, which is the intrinsic innermost level of life. We are connected intimately and always with one another, with all the trees, with all the waters on earth, with the air, with everything. And when you think about that, that is an enormous, enormous thought. It goes beyond the classic modes of religion that most of us have been taught and most of us grew up in. It includes them, but it is not limited by them because there is no limit at all with this fabric of being, this net of light that covers, imbues, and upholds life everywhere. So as soon as I think of um, someone suffering in Colombia, the net of light, because I'm connected with it, goes forward and lifts those beings there. As soon as I think of all the horrors that were done during the Crusades, that net of light goes into what we think of as the past and lifts all of that. As soon as I think of Washington DC and all the intrigue going on there, the net of light moves in and lifts everywhere. There is nowhere the net of light is not. There is nowhere that your love is not. We are part of the one love. We are the one love. We breathe it in, we breathe it out and we live it. And the more we remember that, the more we recall that, the more joy and goodness fills our lives. So it's a lot more fun living like this for me than it was before I knew about all this. So I'm happy, delighted, and I just my favorite thing in the whole world to do is to share this joy of the net of light. So let's see what else do I wanna tell you? Practically speaking, within the family of light of the grandmothers and the net of light, um, we're getting great response to the book in Germany now. So there are German groups being formed throughout that country and throughout the uh, language, the German language groups around the world. Um, there are no gatherings, no physical gatherings this year because of COVID. Uh, and, but we will resume those as soon as we're able to do that. And in the meantime, you're really welcome and all your friends are welcome to join us in these every other Sunday uh, online teachings. So today, um, Kate Rogers, who does a whole lot of work for us in the Grandmothers is gonna come online with us and share some of her experiences. We'll talk back and forth a bit um, and I'm going to read to you another little piece. I did this last, uh, last time we met. I read to you a little piece from the grandmother's fourth book, which I'm still finishing up. I think I'm on the last chapter, so it's going to actually be finished soon, I hope, and uh, it'll be out. But there's a piece that I want to share with you today in there. But before we do that, the first thing first, will be to work with the net of light. So I think that's what we'll do right now. In order, we do, we do this at every meeting that we have. And uh, we do it, as I said before, for ourselves and for the whole earth. And when we meet this way, when we work with the net of light, which we invariably do, the power of what we're sharing together, the communication that's going on between us is lifted incrementally. And so it puts more umpapa into the work we do. And so we wouldn't fail to do it. So let's, uh, we'll probably take five minutes or so to work with the net of light. So right now, just close your eyes and get yourself comfortable. And I'm gonna leave the screen while we're doing this so you don't get distracted by me moving around or anything. 
But start now by letting the chair, the couch, the floor, whatever you're sitting on, hold you. Because it's made to do that. And it will do that. And just rest there. Let yourself be upheld in light in the chair, which is happy, happy to support you. And think of all of us gathered together on this Sunday, gathered all around the world in our hearts, coming together because we want to feel happy. We want to shed happiness wherever we are. We want to uplift and we want to be uplifted. And we come together for this and more. And that's our purpose. And that purpose radiates out from our hearts to one another and all these hearts flowing, the light connecting and flowing back and forth between us. And we think now of the radiant net of light that holds the earth farther than our eyes can see. The net of light is everywhere around us, under us, above us, behind us, beside us. There is nowhere it is not. We think of the net of light and ask the grandmothers to amplify its power to uphold, lift, nurture, and steady all life so that wherever there is suffering or trauma, fear, now there is lift and love and embrace. That is true within us. That is true within your body, my body. That is true within the body of this planet and throughout the cosmos. Let there be love and there is love. And let there be light and there is light. We think of our entire family of light all over the world. We think of the ancestors of the light, many who have come to be with us now because they too want to serve. They too love and want to help. We think of those who are soon to be born coming into this earth and we embrace them in love asking that each one be blessed, given whatever they most need for their highest good. We experience our union with all the sacred and holy places on our planet. And their numbers are legion. And we experience our union with all the sacred and holy beings on our planet and all about our planet. These saints, sages, avatars, angelic beings, nature spirits, all the, those who bless and give and help and experience the great gratitude you feel for them. A wave of gratitude goes out to these great ones. And now a wave of gratitude comes back to you. You who are recognizing this kinship that we share together within the net of light. There's this two way flow of love and gratitude between us all. Ceaseless flow of love and gratitude. And now the grandmothers have asked us to cast the net of light wherever it's most needed. And so we think now, wherever there is a need, and there are so many needs now. And we think first of the human family, because we are part of that particular family. And we cast the net of light now to the human family. Those alive in physical form, those no longer alive in physical form and those soon to be alive in physical form. 
we ask that each being be blessed and held in light. Every man, every woman, every child, everywhere held and blessed. And we ask that wherever there is fear, wherever there is hunger, where there is pain, let the net of light reach in and lift and embrace and comfort. And you may even feel some of that happening within yourself as this is part of your family and you respond as they receive this blessing. And that will go on and on. We ask that all the leaders of this world be blessed and that each one remember how precious they are, that they are part of the net of light, that they're part of the family of light, that they are necessary, important, and greatly loved. We ask that wherever there is human suffering, that that be abated and lifted now. May everyone in all the worlds be happy. And now we cast the net of light to the animal kingdom, asking that every animal everywhere be blessed and given whatever they most need for their highest good, that they be comforted and cared for as they deserve, as God's creatures. May everyone in all the worlds be happy. And we ask that this blessing flow out to the plant kingdom as well, that every tree, every bush, every twig, every little bit of moss and grass be blessed and lifted and held as the precious form of life that it is. Again, may everyone in all the worlds be happy. And then we cast the net of light to the mineral kingdom asking that all the minerals of this earth, all the salts and compounds and rocks and sands be blessed and uplifted, filled with whatever they most need. May everyone in all the worlds be happy. And we ask the net of light to go forth throughout the cosmos and bless all life form everywhere. Everyone in all the worlds be happy. Everyone in all the worlds be happy. Everyone in all the worlds be happy. Oh, peace, peace, peace. And take a moment to notice your own body now. Notice your body response to this uh, simple meditation. This is a sacred moment. Actually, every moment is a sacred moment. But each time we remember that, we really feel it. And all uh, I can say about the net of light is you can't ever overdo it. 
um, use it anytime. Use it just as we did here, taking your time and thinking of all those who you wish to ask the blessing for, or use it on the fly. You see a person and you think, oh, that person's suffering, or they could use some support. Just think of the net of light going to them. You can use it all the time, anytime, in the middle of the night, if you can't sleep, uh, driving down the road, uh, when you're washing dishes, <laughs> uh, when you're out in a crowd, hope you're not out in a crowd right now. And, but anytime, you can't overdo it. Okay, so what I wanna do now is I'm proofreading and tweaking uh, this last chapter of the grandmother's book to make sure I've got it as clear as I can. And so I came across this, this page um, like the one I did last week, it's in chapter eight, but I don't think I read you this part, but I'm going to read it and we'll maybe, uh, I'll say a few words about it and then we'll move on. Okay. The grandmothers say, we want you to expand the power of your reach to be more inclusive when you work with us, to feel how supported you are, not only by us, but by all of life. Everything on earth is here for you. And it's time for you also to be here for everything. Each time you cast the net of light, cast to all life, everywhere. No one and nothing should be left out. Include the waters of the planet, the land masses, the air and the atmosphere of the earth, as well as all the moving and growing things upon the earth. Include the spirits of nature each time you work. By the way, you'll have a lot of fun if you start doing that. They're, they're very joyful, the spirits of nature. And we've been cut off from them for so long that they are ready for a reunion with us. And we are ready for a reunion with them. It'll be fun for you. Just think of them. You don't have to understand or know even who they are. Just think. Oh, the living spirits of nature that love the trees, that love the animals, that love the waters that might even love me and see what happens. Okay, the grandmothers go on. Through their roots, the trees on earth have the potential to be deeply connected. Trees are born communicators. You can learn a lot from them. It's time to honor their skill in communication. Time for you to ask the trees to help strengthen the net of light. Ask them to amplify the reach and the depth of the net throughout the earth by moving with the net of light through their great root systems. Trees are gracious and giving, so they will gladly comply. They are ever giving, the grandmother said. You, you would do well to emulate the trees they said. Trees continuously reach out, sucker, feed, and heal one another. Ask them to teach you how you too can start to connect like this. So we have allies and teachers within the tree kingdom. And it doesn't take much just sitting down with a tree or standing with your hand on it and asking, I'd like to learn from you. Could you teach me about your, yourself, your graciousness in giving? I want to have some of that for myself as well. Experiment a little. Okay, and then the grandmothers kind of switched subjects a bit here. And they say, the world weighs heavily on you. And yes, grandmothers, I admit it, it does. 
We see how you suffer as the miseries and the hidden evils of life rise up to the surface on earth. Cruelty is rife now, they said, nodding their heads in unison. Anger is flaming up everywhere and fear is lurking in the shadows of the night. The world is not, they shook their heads, a pretty picture, so we understand how you feel. They're speaking to us here. These are the times we're living in and they are ugly times and frightening times. And the grandmothers know that. And so they're, they've come closer to us to hold us to them while we go through this time. And they have a little more to say. They say that, but there is much more to it than this, much more they said, and drew themselves to their full height. Underneath the sneaking deeds of those who would run the world and ruin the world lies the fabric of being of the universe. This fabric has been woven with great power, they said. It upholds life everywhere and it is able to withstand tremendous force and wear. This fabric provides the ground for all being. Without the foundation of the fabric of light that supports the world, mankind and all life on earth would be destroyed. You would fall into the darkness of the abyss. However, they said, and now I noticed that they folded their arms tightly across their breasts. As they stood together, now they formed a powerful blockade. We assure you, they said, that this will not happen. No matter how loudly the voices of the foul ones may bray, they said, shaking their heads in disgust, no matter how wildly they may swing their arms, they cannot destroy the foundation of life on earth. They will continue to try, they said, shrugging their shoulders as if to say, well, what do you expect? But they will never succeed. Beneath the horrors that are showing up on the surface of the earth today lies the radiant net of light, brilliant, and growing stronger by the day, they said, as they threw their heads back, this is the fabric of being of the universe. Formed of light and made of love, the net of light connects all living things. It is the largest construct in the universe, and this fabric is empowered each time you think of it, empowered each time you link your heart with it. Call on it now the grandmothers commanded, affirm and magnify the power of the net of light. We have told you, this is the net of light that will hold the earth during the times of change that are now upon you. And we assure you that this time is now. The changes are here. The changes are here. And so are we, sisters and brothers, we are here. And it is no mistake that we are. So our practical job doesn't sound like much, you know, hold steady. Yeah, sure, I'll hold steady. Good luck on holding steady as it rocks and rolls all around us. But we are holding steady. That's the miracle of it. No matter how crazy things get, and every week it's crazier, still, we are holding steady, and we are held steady, and we will always be held steady. You can count on the grandmothers. You can count on the net of light, and you can count on this family of light. We are here for one another. 
So that's enough out of me for a while. So I'd like to um, ask Kate if she'd come in now and I'm gonna click my gallery view off. There you are. So I've got you. And um, I'd, like, I'd like you, this is Kate, who is part of the Laguna Beach Grandmothers Group. So I've had the joy of knowing her well over these last few years. And then when I moved in May, uh, Kate stepped up along with uh, Lene and uh, Loma and Katie McMahon to help hold uh, the Southern California family steady. And she's doing that beautifully. And I think you're having a Zoom meeting a couple times a month, aren't in yeah. Southern California? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so uh, which has enabled me to start doing that now in Northern California. So we'll keep all these things going everywhere. So Kate does a number of things for us. And I'd love, first of all, if you wouldn't mind, just to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things you do because again, uh, we all are volunteers. We all help in whatever way we're drawn to help. And uh, <clears throat> some of us do a great deal and Kate's one who does. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sharon, I blush. <laughs> it is such a joy and it's such an honor to be part of this work and part of this, words escape me, this beautiful, beautiful experience of oneness that I feel with people all around the planet. Um, what I have been able to do, uh, when I first started with the grandmothers, I received my empowerment under the big pepper tree in Sharon's backyard about eight years ago. And I started very tentatively, you know, just kind of shyly. I had a lot of the international people would come and stay at our home and uh, got involved in, in the, Sharon's always really wonderful about including people and giving people things to do to help us be empowered to feel the energy of the work as ours and not just top down from her. And in the past, I guess, three or four years, I started being very drawn to working with the newsletter because I found that I felt in the messages imagery and, um, you know, would I would look for an image that would capture the message of the grandmothers. And anytime you get in, in the way of, or in the, in the pathway of the message of the grandmothers, you're enlightened by it and inspired by it. So that was what I had been doing and continue to do. And now um, Nadia, who is our, our technical uh, wizard over there in Belgium and who helps us stay completely up to date with all the, net, uh, the website and all the tricks and so forth, she was doing so much and had coordinated a lot of uh, translation efforts over in Europe. And it was getting to be a little bit too much for her to have to plug in all the translated lines as we started to make the translations. It's very exciting. I think you would have seen it in the last newsletter. Um, we are now moving toward putting eight languages, translation languages on all the videos that appear on our website. And this is something um, that the translators have also experienced and expressed that by listening and working on the translations, they're feeling the grandmothers. And it's a joy for them as well. So I feel the joy, they feel the joy. We all, it's, it's, it's not work. You know, I'm just really lucky I get to do this. And um, uh, so anyway, that's where, where we are right now. So it's uh, a, a great time to thank all of our translators that are out there. Uh, we have women, in France, Germany, Italy, uh, Spain, we have actually, yeah, we do. Um, I'm actually naming countries. I should be calling them languages because the people are sometimes, our Spanish translator now is in Connecticut. But uh, want you all to know how, how much we do appreciate the hugeness of what you are bringing to us now, because it seems as 
I have gotten more and more familiar with all of the videos that are on the on the website. I now realize that they're just as rich as reading the books. Just and they're in these wonderful forms where you can sit at your computer, put your headphones on and listen to a five to 10 minute video and have a real, a download of what we've just experienced now in miniature. So that's pretty much what I do now. Um, and Sharon, did you want me to talk about the Ho'opono? Ho yeah, yeah. Uh, you and I were talking the other day and, and you said something about the Ho'oponopono, and I, I thought, yeah, that is really important. So, yes, please. Yeah, I, I guess we all are in living in this world, and we're all feeling the pain and the frustration and the rage sometimes ourselves at some of the decisions that are made in people in authority that are hurting people and causing people to die. And so forth. I mean, it, you could go on and on and on, and I'm not going to get into a big political discussion. But it occurred to me in my heart that in rather than to find ourselves in opposition to these people, we need to practice this sort of reaching through. And it's not unlike the net of light, but where you feel that you're connected and you're one with them, but extend them forgiveness and We've worked in our local group, the, the Laguna Beach group actually used to have every couple of weeks a Ho'oponopono group. This is a Hawaiian prayer of reconciliation that is extremely simple to do, and it has deeply profound effects on the person doing it and those people around it. And you can look it up and read about it on the internet. It's Ho'oponopono, H apostrophe O P O N O P O N O. And it's very simple. You, you sit quietly and you repeat the words, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. And I read a little about it this morning. It releases things on the cellular level. So it's a healing prayer for you, the speaker, but it has profound effects on all those around you. And it's an amazing thing because the minute you get into the requesting of forgiveness, you're, you're owning some of your own responsibility. Instead of saying, I, I would not do that evil deed, you, you're sort of putting yourself in the soup, as it were, of humanity, which we all are. And uh, I hope I'm not going on too long, but I, I was reading yesterday, and it also, I was in the beginning of the, the um, Our Love is Our Power book. The first chapter, I think it was around page 15, and I was reading about the container meditation, and it, it occurred to me how similar it was to the Ho'oponopono because it describes we as containers, yin-like containers that simply hold and don't try to change or impact or manipulate, but simply hold all of the dramas and those around us and all the activity and just hold it. And in so doing, we merge with the love of the great mother and can provide a great service, great healing to those. And if the grandmothers say in that chapter, I believe too, if, if you're finding it difficult to hold and be in a position of great love and forgiveness, then give that person to us and we will love and forgive them for you. Mm. So... It's pretty powerful stuff, and I think I certainly feel Im immediately blessed when I do that. So, thank you, Kate. Thank you. That was beautifully said. Um, the only thing I'd add to that, and you touched on it already, is when I get into this position where I'm really mad or really 
uh, yeah, I'm mad. I am, you know, judging somebody. They've done something. I'm mad. If I can just remember to do the Ho'oponopono, I'll start to say, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. It takes no time at all for that mad to just leave. And uh, it, I, I begin to see the absurdity of it because here I am so mad at whoever is out there who did something. And it's just ridiculous because I have done those things or similar things in some way. And immediately it's like, oh, I'm just another human being just like this one. And it's, it's freeing for me. And that's, I love that. It feels good. I can go from feeling really tight and angry and bad to feeling loose and good and soft immediately with that Ho'oponopono. So thank you for, for suggesting that. And I just, then uh, Kate and Nadi were telling me today about how they began to sing to each other over Zoom. And I thought, oh, we want to do that for sure. So Nadia, would you come in and you two do that? And I'm going to just watch you. Hi, <laughs> Nadia. Hi. <laughs> Nadia and I are sisters here. We are uh, very, very linked in our hearts. Okay, so which song do we start with? Sharon, any requests? Speed. D Speed, okay. You start, Shall Kate. I sure. Okay. These feet will hold me up. These feet will hold me up. These feet won't let me down. These feet won't let me down. These feet are growing roots. These feet are growing roots. Right in the solid ground. Right in the solid ground. Oh, mama, mama, mama. Oh, mama, mama, mama. Spread the news around. Spread the news around. That all the grandmothers, that all the grandmothers, we got our feet in the ground. We have our feet in the ground. That's <laughs> great. That's great because we've we've been so frustrated. We haven't been able to sing on Zoom because of that echoing weirdness that goes on. So sing one more, ladies, please. Okay. You want to start, Nod? <clears throat> Blessed am I. Freedom am I. I am the infinite within my soul. I have no beginning and I have no end. All this I am. Boom, boom, boom. boom. Blessed am I. Freedom am I. I am the infinite within my soul. I have no beginning and I have no end. All this I am. All this I am. Dee -dee -dee -dee. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. And if you want more music, go to uh, netoflight.org <laughs> and right. you'll find all the grandmother's songs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Nadia. Thank you, Kate. And thank you, everyone who's joined us today. We'll be linked, continuously linked. You're never alone. We're always with you. Um, constantly linked within the net of light. We are a family of light, here to uphold one another, here to uphold everyone and everything for the highest good of all concerned. May everyone in all the worlds be happy. Till next time.